Hello everyone, so this video is all about extra skills which can create high impact when you appear in VLSI interview and can increase your chances of selection. So please watch the video till end. I'm Rajveer. If you are searching or preparing for VLSI job, then you must be aware of VLSI design flow. VLSI design flow basically tells about the stages a processor needs to go through. It starts from a specification study and goes till fabrication. For each stage of VLSI design flow, VLSI engineers with different skills are required. Like for front end, industry required design engineer or integration engineer or verification engineer. And for back end, DFT engineer, physical design engineer and various categories are there. So while studying advanced VLSI courses or doing mini projects, you will get to know which side is yours. This video is all about what extra you should learn or focus to perform well in interview as a fresher. If you will be having a skill shared in this video, then it would be a great add-on to your CV as well as chances of getting placed in VLSI companies will be high. So here are the bare minimum requirements for getting placed in VLSI companies. Digital electronics is one of major requirement for VLSI jobs. You need to prepare each and every topic which was there in gate syllabus or your BTEC academics. Second one is hardware description language. VHDL and Verilog two languages are there and more famous one is Verilog. There is one very good NPTEL course from IIT Kharagpur for learning Verilog. If you cannot watch all lectures then at least complete first 25 lectures of that series. Apart from this try to code small combinational and sequential circuits and verify their operation. You can use EDA playground website to practice Verilog for free. Third major subject is digital IC design. So without knowledge of these three things job in core VLSI is not even possible. For digital IC design, refer Kang's book and IIT Madras lecture series. All the links for recommended courses are there in description. So other bare minimum things include testing and verification aspects like why verification or testing is done, what are the methods, at which stage of VLSI design flow it is done. And after this, VLSI physical design concepts such as placement, routing, floor planning. So you need to study what are they actually. Also study about clock SQ and clock distribution network. For VLSI physical design, one NPTEL course is there. No need to see all the lectures, just watch some relevant lectures so that you are aware of VLSI physical design concepts. After this, low power VLSI design, design techniques such as clock gating, power gating are there. And there are ways to save DKS power, dynamic power. So you need to learn respective techniques. So these were some very important courses which are very much necessary and can fetch you a job. Now I will be talking about extras which can be add on during selection process and with this knowledge you can make positive impact in your interview and chances of selection may get increased. These includes mini projects, tool requirement for different stages in VLSI design flow, computer architecture concepts, in-depth learning of memory, communication concepts, various protocol knowledge and their use cases. So let us discuss each one of them in detail. First one is mini projects. You need to make an Google search and try to find out some simpler projects which you can do using freely available tools and enhance your VLSI knowledge. For example, you can write a code for GCD calculator, process detector, synchronous or asynchronous FIFOs. So with this, you will learn about architectural digital circuit design concepts. While making your data path and FSM, keep in mind that design should use less resources and provide higher performance. Means just do not do project for name of sake. Try to do some circuit level or RTL coding level optimization. Read about different FSM coding styles, advantages and disadvantages of each one. And then choose your coding style for your respective project. So in simpler words, pick a project, make a block diagram for it, data path and FSM, write the RTL code, write test bench, verify the functionality, think about the optimizations you can make. Second one is tools. So with exponential growth in semiconductor market, technology nodes are scaled down and SOCs became so complex that they contain billions of transistors. So manual verification is impossible scenario. And here comes the requirement of EDA tools. At each stage of VLSI design flow, different EDA tools are required for optimization, verification, synthesis, post-synthesis verification and testing of SOCs. So you need to know about these tools. It is not required to gain ability to run each of these tools, but gain some knowledge about famous industry tools such as design compiler for synthesis, conformal for LEC, lint for RTL, code quality check and so on. And third one is computer architecture. So electronics is closely related to CSE, hence need of computer architecture concepts is there for VLSI jobs too. A fundamental knowledge on computer architecture as well as memory interfacing concepts, assembly coding will be a great add-on to your CV. 
also try to learn various types of memories and their detailed understanding sram dram volatile non volatile and understanding of memory based on various other classifications you need to learn you can follow rebe books memory chapter to learn these concepts and next one is communication concepts need of digital communication concepts is very much required in industry as end products belongs to wifi 5g or other wireless communication systems also if you have some basic knowledge about these concepts then your work becomes easy even if it's real life work so there is one course principle of communication systems from iit kanpur you can watch some basic lectures from that course to enhance your communication knowledge and next one is protocols there are some on chip communication protocols developed by arm examples are apb asb axi these protocols are used for establishing communication between master and slaves where master is who sends request and slaves are basically internal or external memories or peripherals who process requests so if you have some basic knowledge about these protocols like you know in what situation what protocol is used then that is enough no need to entirely study specification of these protocols if you are a fresher and with these aspects i would like to end the video if you cannot do all of these then at least do bare minimum plus one mini project with good understanding that's all thank you for watching the video